All right. Okay. Yay! So new products. All right. This first up. This is the up, time I, I prepared for. Here's a bunch of wires. It's wires and a breadboard. We have a bunch of these breadboard and wire kits. They're pretty handy if you kind of want to get started all in one and um, they come with really nice uh, pre-cut bent and stripped wires. So it's a couple bucks more, but uh, you get a really nice breadboard. It's a, it's a higher quality breadboard as well with a really nice silk screen. And of course, like a 70 something wire. So it's a pretty cute little kit. Okay. Um, I can show it on the hover just because it's... Okay. Just to show how, how many, because it's, it's tough to see. So you get... Um, this breadboard, which I really like, it has the black and uh, red markings, a really pretty breadboard and uh, really good quality. And then, yeah, you get like a whole bunch of little jumpers, little teeny ones, medium ones, uh, long ones, and like super long ones. So you can, um, you can use them for long breadboards or short ones or whatever. But basically, it's, um, they're ready to go and they're good 22 gauge ones, so they'll stick well and uh, make for pretty breadboarding, which, you know, I like the long jumper wires when they first start, but once I've gotten a design done, I like to cut uh, smaller jumper wires so um, you don't get, like, cables all over the place. So, you know, instead of, instead of, like, making your own, you know, like this, basically, you get these nice short cables instead. Okay. Moving right along. Um... A giant button. No, it's... It is a ginormous button. Yeah, it's not. This well, is, it's it not look, ginormous. The, the, the photo um, is deceiving because that's not the scale. But it's an RGB. But it's so detailed. It's a nice photo. Um, By popular other, demand. We have some other photos, too. We now have an RGB metal durable button. Uh, you know, it's meant for use in projects that want a really good-looking button, maybe a, a really rugged button. Um, don't have to worry about this breaking nearly as easily as plastic buttons. Which, uh, which overhead do you I want to use? I got this on the hover. I'm going to use the hover cam. You're going to use the hover cam yeah. for everything? Yeah? Okay. All right. Hover's easiest for me. Okay. So, um, on the back, you get a whole bunch of pins. So, you know, you have the switch element. So this, uh, you know, it's a momentary switch. So when you press it, the two contacts connect. But apart from that, there's also four pins on the bottom that are used for R, G, and B LEDs. So there's, there's one for red, one for green, one for blue. And I just have it hooked up to an Arduino that's uh, pulsing through the colors for you. You know, you just get your uh, PWM going and uh, you can have any color you want. And so you can change it maybe, you know, red when it's off. And then when you press it, it turns green to let you know that the status has changed. So it's like a status indicator button. Really nice. Um, you just, you know, drill a 60 millimeter hole up to a quarter inch deep. And then this comes with a uh, O-ring and a uh, nut for mounting. And then, uh, yeah, I just have it hooked up to this Arduino here so you can see. But you would just solder wire to the bottom contacts yeah. for, for connection. But yeah, RGB. That's what you really wanted. Yeah, every time we had this, the one color ones, everyone's like, I want RGB one. So we RGB. did it. It's here. It's now. We have RGB. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up. This next pr uh, product has a story, but this first is a video. So you see how that turns on and off? Yeah. Well, we originally saw this from our friend Naomi. So Naomi did this cool project where these LCDs um, would turn on or off, and um, she wasn't naked underneath. She she's like, wearing stuff underneath. She's wearing she stuff underneath, underneath, but like you know, everyone freaked out. Like you've never seen someone in shorts or something. So um, we saw those and we're like, oh my gosh, um, cool. do you know the supplier for these uh, LED glass things? And uh, we were able to get them and she just tweeted just a few minutes ago. She says, oh great, because the factory that she got them from had a minimum order quantity. So now we're able to get those for makers. So um, I wanna show this live because I think that's the only way you can um, show how this works. And I don't have a top, but I do yeah. have a single piece of glass. This is what yes. it looks like when it's off. Yeah. And it's like, it's not going to be, you know, completely clear because it is polarized. So it's, you know, it does block some light. It's gray. You can definitely see through it. Um, but then, you know, right now I have it hooked up to, um, you know, the same Arduino, basically turning on a pin high or low um, once a second. And then this is it basically turning dark or light. So the way LCD glass works is it's, it's, even though you put a voltage on it, um, once it's switched over to black, it almost, or clear, it doesn't use almost any power. So if I disconnect it, um, just when it turned black, I can actually, you know, hold it up. Yeah. Eventually it will um, start fading away. It'll, you know, there is some uh, 
uh, discharge. But you can see how dark it is. Now, it's not completely perfectly blackout. It's not. It's very dark. Yeah. But if you put a, a flashlight behind it, sunlight will come through. I believe it blocks, you know, at least 95, maybe um, 99% of light. Quick question. Can you cut it? No, it's glass. Nope. So you, you get it in this piece. Uh, it has electrodes on the end that you can solder to carefully or you can clip onto. Yeah. Um, the, the race is on. Please, someone, start making sunglasses. You're going to do it. Just make sunglasses. You're just going to do it. But the, it's, this one I like because I've had uh, LCDs that need 10 volts. Um, this one needs only uh, 0 to 5 volts. And what's interesting is that as you go from 0 to 5 volts, it does get darker and darker. So if you don't want to have it be like pretty much uh, pitch black, you can um, put on like 2.5 volts. and It'll be kind of in between. And then, oh, the only thing is that this is, oh, I can show it with the, the RGB LED behind it. Okay. So, you know, you can see. That's pretty good. You can, like, barely see the light. That's cool. But it is, it is pretty dark. It's basically yeah. dark enough that I wouldn't worry. You know, if you didn't have a backlight, if you didn't have something light behind it, if you had it pressed up against yeah. something, like, um, cool. like text, or if you wanted to uh, block out, you know, and basically non-lit object, you Adabot. won't see it. No Adabot. You're pretty much Adabot. not going to see it. No Adabot. All right. So um, that's cool. And a uh, special shout out and thanks to Naomi, who not only did this project, you can find it on Imagerl, um, or just search the internet for like this or look at our blog. And uh, you'll be able to um, see the first project that we saw with this. And now we have them available in the Adafruit store. Yep. Okay. Uh, next up. Very cool. Very delicate. So just be careful when you use them. Huzzah! Huzzah! We have, uh, this isn't a new huzzah, it's basically the huzzah, the feather huzzah you know and love, um, but now it is soldered. So we now have uh, two more versions of this very popular feather board. This version has plain headers on, plug into a breadboard, you don't need to solder anything, it's ready to go. So it's, you know, an extra dollar or two, but it's very easy to use, you do mm -hmm. not need anything. And then we have another version with stacking headers. So oh. if you'd like to stack something on top of it, like a feather wing, or you want to uh, connect, you know, jumper wires into it or something, we also have a version. It's an it's an extra dollar because the the uh, headers are more pricey. Oh, um, I see. So this is plain, plain stacking, stacky, plain, plain stacky. stacky. If you want in a breadboard, use either. You can use either. But you can use plain. Plain. Or you can use stacky. Stacky is better if you want to put a feather wing on top, on like top. an OLED feather wing or, you know, one of our NeoPixel yeah. featherings or a radio or whatever. That's where they go. That's when you would want to go with the stacking version. So okay. this is just for convenience. A lot of people were like, well, I want to have a classroom pack or something and we don't we don't do any soldering. Yeah. This way you don't need to do any soldering. Okay. And then um, the reason for the code tonight is uh, we have a bunch of the Pycom stuff in. Yes, Hooray. we have four items from PyCom IoT. Yeah. So starting with the YPy 2. So this is, you know, we've carried the YPy 1, which I believe, what was the, I think it was a CC3200 chipset from TI. Uh, this one uses the ESP32, so it's a much better processor, can do a lot more. Uh, they ported MicroPython to this processor and then also contributed the ESP port back to uh, the MicroPython project. So that's really nice if you want to make your own custom. Shout out to Fred and Joe. Yeah. Because we were corresponding. Creds. Yeah. Thank Beats. you. Yeah, okay. Appreciate it. Um, but that's not the reason we carried it. So it's a good product. And of too. course, Damien who made. Damien, of course. Yeah. Who did it. Uh, this is kind of nice if you want to, um, you know, it basically has a Python. Now you Pardon. get the sneezes. I get the sneezes and the hiccups. So you get the yeah. Python interpreter built into it. Uh, there's Wi Fi and Bluetooth. I think the BLE stuff is a little. Uh, new. I know that they're still working on that with ESP32, um, but for the most part, things are working. You can also update firmware pretty easily. Uh, it has a NeoPixel as a button, has these pinouts, you can solder it straight on. Uh, looks like it has an antenna selection, so if you want to go with a um, UFL, you can okay. do that. Uh, we have antennas in the store. So this is just Wi Fi and Bluetooth on the ESP32 with a Python interpreter. Okay. Next up, this is a low Pi. It's a bit bigger because it has the ESP32. Plus, uh, Semtech, I think uh, SX1278 or whatever, 900 megahertz LoRa radio. Uh, so it's all combined in one, so you basically get uh, you know, your, your Bluetooth energy, your Wi-Fi, your LoRa. Um, you can do you know, long range with LoRa, yeah. shorter range with Wi-Fi, and ultra short range with Bluetooth. 
But you know, each one has its own uh, benefits. So with this board, you kind of get to do anything and everything, and you can pass data between the protocols. As no well. excuses. All the protocols are there. Okay. Yeah. And then. Um, antenna kit. Yeah, the, uh, there's an antenna kit that you can get because I showed a picture of it, not included with this or the board that goes into the it. The antenna kits for the LoRa. We yeah. actually um, so our other LoRa boards. We you know usually just tell people because they're low cost. We tell people to solder a wire. But if you're having this nice board, maybe you want an wire. antenna kit. This antenna kit comes with a UFL to SMA connector and a 900 megahertz antenna, perfect for use with your low pipe. They'll also work with any of our other 900 megahertz uh, devices because it is just a 900 megahertz antenna. So, yeah. you know, if you want to use this with our LoRa or FM69, it'll work as well. But this is from this is specifically we're carrying it for yeah. people who get the low pi. They should pick one up so they don't run the LoRa without an antenna. Okay, the last part of the night. This is like a like a breakout board for the uh, Wi-Pi 2 and then the low pi that we just showed. Yeah. Uh, so you get a USB to serial converter chip, you get a USB, uh, sorry, a um, breakouts for everything, you get a um, SD card socket, so a couple little extras. Yeah. Expansion uh, board. Maybe a battery charger too, I don't remember. I think, yeah, I think you get a, a LiPo battery charger booster or something. Check yeah. the product page. I don't remember if there's a booth converter. It looks like there's a battery charger, though, yeah. uh, built in because it says charge. SD card. Yeah, the SD card I got. Yeah. So a little, little add-on basically gives you a bunch of extras. So while you're developing, it's a little easier because otherwise it's like, well, you know, you want to get a serial console. This kind of yeah. makes it easy. So I suggest getting basically one of these if you're starting out with uh, the Wi-Pi or the low pi. Yep. Okay. And with that being said, Lady Data, that was uh, new products. New, new, new. Good work. Okay. New, um, new, new.